Gregorials, the gifted, the many facets of the life and work of Dr. Paulos March Gregorials point to the versatility of his interests and range of his contribution. First Metropolitan of Delhi Diocese, Principal of the Orthodox Theological Seminary at Kota Dam, Founder of the Delhi Orthodox Center, Articulator of the Orthodox Faith Across the World, Biblical Scholar and Teacher, Exponent of Sacred Traditions, Promoter of Unity Among Orthodox Churches, Ecumenical Leader Devoted to Interfaith Dialogue and Cooperation, President of the World Council of Churches, Scholar, Philosopher, Author, Educationist, Editor, Linguist, Public Speaker, Socio-Political Thinker, Lover of Children and Nature, Advocate of Women's Equality, Environmental Integrity and Holistic Health, Crusader Against Exploitation, Discrimination, Neocolonialism and Religious Cultural Arrogance, Activist for Disarmament, Justice and Peace, Lifelong Seeker After the Light of Knowledge, Truth, and the Transcendent Source of Our Being. Seldom in our time has the spirit of Orthodox Christianity found such creative expression in response to as many human concerns as through the life and work of Metropolitan Dr. Paulos March Gregorios. Defying the serious physical discomfort in recent years, and until the peaceful end on the morning of the 24th November 1996, he was incessantly at work and prayer, not only for his diocese and church, but also for all humanity in truth and love to use his own words. Though filled with enthusiasm, young Paul Varghese was not in a position to continue his studies, yet he kept up his early love of reading and journalistic writing on current affairs. He accepted employment first in a private firm, and then in the post and telegraph department at Ha Chi, his birthplace. Soon he became known as an efficient worker and an active trade union leader. It was an exciting time in the mid-1940s when political freedom could be seen coming. For his part, he wanted to serve humanity though at that stage, the way ahead was not clear. Coming from a traditional family of practicing Christians, he was aware that the church was a natural source of inspiration for his idealistic ambition. He also felt that for drawing upon the spiritual and moral resources offered by the church, it was not always necessary to become a priest. Much later, in 1961, he accepted priesthood. Looking back, he said of his life, one thing led to another. Yes, logically and to a divine design, as we now see. Quite by an accident of circumstances, he was offered the post of a school teacher in Ethiopia, waiving the condition that the candidate should be a college graduate. He was 25, and he accepted the post. This was a turning point in his life. News of his capability and enthusiasm reached the emperor, who was impressed by his work as well as by the speed at which he could master the local language, Amharic but the teacher opted to be a lifelong student. After three mutually useful years in Ethiopia, he went to the United States for further studies. After receiving his BA from Goshen College in Indiana, he continued his studies at Oklahoma University, at the Union Theological Seminary in New York, at Princeton Master of Divinity and at Yale Master of Sacred Theology. He did his doctoral studies in Oxford and Munster in Germany, and received his doctorate in theology from the Sedrumport University, his doctoral dissertation centered on the profound writings of the 4th century philosopher Bishop March Gregorios of Nyssa in the West Asian province of Cappadocia, a part of present-day Turkey. Following the official approval of Christianity by Emperor Constantine in 313, the early era of Christian martyrs came to an end, and the Church was in a position to give expression to its faith about its life here and now in this world, without being content with thinking about the other world alone. The church was free and had to take the responsible role in politics, in education, and in culture. That was the context of the creative concern of Gregory of Nyssa, a teacher of the faith, accepted by both Eastern and Western Christendom, with the present and future of the human race in relation to God and the historical world. His thought and teachings provided a foundational framework for the thought and work of his 20th century student, Paulos March Gregorios. Returning to India. Paul Varghese worked as an honorary lecturer at the Union Christian College in Hallway, as an Associate General Secretary of the Student Christian Movement 1954-56 and as the General Secretary of the Orthodox Student Movement 1955-57. Haile Selassie, the Emperor of Ethiopia, visited India in 1956, and he persuaded Paul Varghese to return to Ethiopia as his aide and advisor. 
While Ethiopia 1956 to 59 he involved himself in education Ethiopia, promoted Indo-Ethiopian diplomatic relations, and lectured at the Addis Ababa University. Around this time, Paul Varghese decided that the time had come for him to return to his church back in India, particularly in view of the peace being restored to the church, following the 1958 settlement between the Catholicos of the East and the Patriarch of Antioch. He was ordained as a priest by the Catholicos H. H. Basil Gonsi Varghese I.I. in 1961. Fr. Paul Varghese's field of work soon shifted to Geneva, with the World Council of Churches. There he headed the Division of Ecumenical Action as an Associate General Secretary. Later, he was a member of the Central Committee and of the Executive Committee, moderator of the Commission on Church and Society 1975-83 and one of its presidents 1983-91. He led WCC delegations to major conferences including the On General Assembly Special Sessions on Disarmament 1983-1988. In WCC forums and beyond, he persistently opposed apartheid and the old and new colonialism. He chaired the World Conference on Faith, Science and the Future in Cambridge, USA 1979. He was the Vice President of the Christian Peace Conference 1970-90. In 1975, Fr. Paul Varghese was elevated as a bishop with the name Paulos Gregorios. He took charge of the newly formed Diocese of Delhi, a position he held until his death. He established the Delhi Orthodox Center, where he began such ambitious projects as the Nevish Antique Andre for promoting peace and justice, and Sarva Dramanalaya for inter religious dialogue and cooperation. Concurrently, March Gregorios was the principal of the Orthodox Theological Seminary at Kottayam, the premier teaching and training institution for the priests of the church. He raised it to a college recognized for the award of graduate and postgraduate degrees. He established the Sophia Center linked to the seminary. A member of the Senate of the Kerala and Senampur Universities for a number of years, March Gregorios was a visiting professor at Denver, Harvard, Worcester, and Princeton. He was a fellow at the Indian Institute of Advanced Study at Shimla, the Vice President of the Kerala Philosophical Congress, and the President of the Indian Philosophical Congress. Among the honors and awards received by Dr. Paulos March Gregorios are honorary doctorates in theology Lenin Red, Budapest and Prompt Hall of Fame Award for Extraordinary Service to Peace and Human Unity USA Certificate of Merit for Distinguished Service and Inspired Leadership of the World Church, Dictionary of Informational Biographies. Cambridge Order of St. Vladimir USSR Order of St. Sergius USSR Order of Mary Magdalene Poland Order of Bishop Francis Hoder Poland Otto Nershka Prize of Peace German Democratic Republic Soviet Lam Nehru Award India Man of the Year Award 1990 American Biographical Institute USA BHI Patam Beer Singh International Award India Golden Academy Award for Lifetime Achievement USA Eminent Ecumenical Education Award India Distinguished Alumnus Award Princeton Theological Seminary Oscar Pfister Award American Psychiatric Association USA Social Service Award Goshen College USA The honors made him happier for the cause, but humbler for himself. The unusual versatility of March Gregorios consistently found expression in several ways. The capacity to transmit the essence of spiritual, philosophical and socio-political concepts with a lucidity springing from the depths of his own study and reflection. A constructive compassion, rooted in an ancient faith, that reaches, farther than just help, to those in various forms of oppression and helplessness, to ways of social restructuring through an ethical intellectual renewal, to address the deeper causes of the human condition. The illuminating search for the fundamental principles shared by the different religions of the East as a possible basis for common understanding and endeavor. A spontaneous interest in natural and social sciences, as well as in historical processes, resulting in holistic contributions to contemporary thought. March Gregorios will be remembered by the members of the Church as a modern teacher of their ancient faith, and by the reading public for the many books and papers he wrote in several languages, particularly in English and Malayalam. The recurrent themes of his writings reflect the quest for truth and love, freedom and creativity, peace and justice. He was not for otherworldly mysticism which ignored man's sinful reality, nor was he impressed by secular humanism that was unconcerned about the source of our being. As he wrote in his book Cosmic Man, the Divine Presence with reference to the teachings of Gregory of Nyssa, 
thought is not scholastic to the extent of eliminating the element of mystery, but then neither is it an unintellectual mysticism. PXVIII. March Gregorios was of course sensitive to the need for urgent response to human suffering compounded by many-sided poverty. Of this, his modest efforts for the stone cutters of Tutlakabad in Delhi and the orphaned boys of Calicaj in Kerala are examples. What concerned him more basically was the futility of swabbing the floor without closing the tap. He wanted the socio-economic system that regularly reproduced poverty to be altered. This explains his lifelong interest in politics. He was not in politics but of politics. Whenever he found time, he dialogued with the leaders of both the political right and left. Not surprisingly, he had a better wavelength with the latter. He held up a mirror to them to show how India, in particular, was impoverished not only for historical reasons but also by an ecological crisis and the so-called secularization. Way back in 1978, he stated in his book, The Human Presence, the affairs of the world are largely in the hands of people who are expert at making money, waging war and playing politics and proceeded to present an orthodox view of nature. On secularism, so fashionable among some intellectuals, he was equally clear and sharp. In a recent essay, he wrote, Secularism creates communal conflict because it brutally attacks religious identity, while pretending to be tolerant of all religions. It claims to be neutral towards all religions, equidistant from them, but it refuses to acknowledge itself as basically a religious ideology with a powerful propaganda machine India International Center Quarterly. 22 and 1 over 1995. In his book, Enlightenment, East and West 1989 he develops a critique of European Enlightenment. He asks the elite in India, who have so easily borrowed from the liberal humanism and technological civilization of the West, to step back and take a second look. We need to face all three forms of the European Enlightenment now confronting us, Enlightenment liberalism, imperialist pragmatism, and socialist humanism. We have to learn from all these, but critically so. Dot, 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 the better values of European enlightenment are embodied in socialism, but we need to deepen them by putting them on a more secure and more transcendental foundation. We have the spiritual resources hidden away among our people to meet that challenge. They are waiting for some new life that can quicken their creativity. This new life cannot come from top down. The job of our elite is to enable our people to become the co-authors of the new enlightenment. The book was acclaimed in the West. March Gregorios did not share the view that all religions said the same thing, but agreed that religions had common elements. Therefore, inter-religious dialogue for cooperation had untapped potential. During his 20 years in Delhi, he had extremely cordial and productive relations with the spiritual leaders of the Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim, Jain and Sikh religions. March Gregorios had an abiding interest in education, which he maintained through children's easy access to him, through the schools run by the church, and by interaction with educationalists, besides working as the principal of the theological college. Also, he was for reviving the tradition of women's active involvement in church affairs. The illness during the closing years of his life seemed to have reactivated his interest in holistic health and healing. He organized a major international seminar in February 1995 in Surajkul near Delhi. The papers prepared for it, including those by him, and its report on which he was personally working in his last days are valuable for the alert public as well as for medical practitioners from the different systems of healing. Bringing them together to re-examine their assumptions was a purpose which the consultation substantially achieved. March Gregorio sought a healing touch to a wounded society. In the course of his lifelong spiritual intellectual quest with a social purpose, March Gregorios has authored a number of books, besides those cited earlier, The Joy of Freedom 1967, 1987 The Gospel of the Kingdom 1968 The Freedom of Man 1972 Freedom and Authority 1974 The Quest for Certainty 1975 Truth Without Tradition 1978 Science for Sane Societies 1980 The Indian Orthodox Church an overview 1982 The Meaning and Nature of Diakony The 1988 The Light Bright 1992 And Human God 1992 Apart from numerous periodical articles, contributions to symposia and encyclopedias, and lectures in scores of universities worldwide, March Gregorios was a chief editor of the Quarterlies, Star of the East New Delhi and Kurahatan Khatadam. 
Dr. Paulos March Gregorios lived a full life. True to his name, Gregorios, he remained ever awake. Yet such was the ambition of the agenda he set for himself. His work will have to be continued by those who share his convictions and interests.